Good morning, good morning. Um, just want to talk a little bit about uh, what my opinion of uh, Geechee is. Uh, and I'll back that up a little bit with a, a little short clip of um, I got off of YouTube here. Uh, and it, I got this from Black Experience and Abundance, and it's uh, the title of the video is the Black Seminole Gullah Geechee Contribution to U.S. Emancipation, and this came out October 12, 2020. Um, I've always I, I get on I make these videos and I, and I say the word Geechee and uh, and I you know I say I'm a third eye Geechee and Kwame Brown is, and I. Don't go into real detail, but uh, this video, this little clip that I'll show you right now, um, they did a pretty good job on explaining what uh, Geechee is and uh, where we come from and what our contribution was to um, emancipation. Um, so let me uh, let me go ahead and flip the screen around and get into it. Uh, in poverty, but thou art rich welcome to the black excellence and abundance channel The Black Seminoles are a group of the Gullah Geechee who escaped from the rice plantations in South Carolina and Georgia. They built their own settlements on the Florida frontier, fought a series of wars for over a hundred year period to preserve their freedom and were scattered across North America. They have played a significant role in the emancipation of the slaves but have never received the recognition they deserve. Some Gullah slaves managed to escape from coastal South Carolina and Georgia south into the Florida Peninsula. The Gullahs were establishing their own free settlements in the Florida wilderness as early as the late 1700s. They built separate villages of thatched roof houses surrounded by fields of corn and swamp rice, and they maintained friendly relations with the mixed population of refugee Indians. Can an 8,000 year old herb really increase your tea, lower your body fat, and maximize your bedroom performance? Clinical trials say absolutely. Sorry about that. Yes. Thatched roof is a very old roofing method and has been used in both tropical and temperate climates. In time, the two groups came to view themselves as parts of the same tribe in which blacks held important positions of leadership. In 1738, the newly freed black men and women established the town of Gracia Real de Santa Teresa de Mose, which was the first black town established in North America. This black land was a place the slaves would escape to have their own land and a place to have military training. Although they were not given credit for it, the so-called Indian War was actually the Gullah Wars. The Gullahs were physically more suited to the tropical climate and possessed an indispensable knowledge of tropical agriculture. And without their assistance, the Indians would not have been able to cope effectively with the Florida environment. There were skirmishes in 1812 and 1816. In 1818, General Andrew Jackson led an American army into Florida to claim it for the United States and a war finally erupted. The blacks and Indians fought side by side in a desperate struggle to stop the American advance. In 1835, the Second Seminole War broke out and this full-scale guerrilla war would last for six years and claim the lives of 1,500 American soldiers. The black Seminoles waged the fiercest resistance as they feared that capture or surrender meant death or return to slavery and they were more adept at living and fighting in the jungles than their Indian comrades. These men were literally fighting for their lives and the lives of their families and friends. They were true freedom fighters and they felt like they would die before they went back into captivity. Two of the great leaders of note of these wars 
is Osceola and John Horse. In addition to aiding the natives in their fight, Black Seminoles recruited plantation slaves to rebellion at the start of the war. Together, these forces were responsible for the destruction of 21 sugar plantations from Christmas Day, December 25th, 1835 through the summer of 1836. They scared the daylights of the plantation owners and those who sought to continue to oppress them. They were very instrumental in ending slavery. The American commander, General Jessup, informed the War Department that this, you may be assured, is a Negro and not an Indian war. And a U.S. congressman of the period commented that these black fighters were contending against the whole military power of the United States. When the army finally captured the black Seminoles, officers refused to return them to slavery, fearing that these seasoned warriors accustomed to their freedom would wreak havoc on the Southern plantations. In 1842, the army forcibly removed them along with their Indian comrades to Indian territory, now Oklahoma, in the unsettled West. The black Seminoles exiled from their Florida strongholds were forced to continue their struggle for freedom on the Western frontier. In Oklahoma, the government attempted to put them under the authority of the Creek Indian slave owners who tried to curb their freedom and white slave traders came at night to kidnap their women and children. So I'm gonna stop it right there. Uh, let me flip this around. So, you know, like I said, I got this from uh, Black Excellence and Abundance channel. Um, shout out to them. I hope they don't, you know, get upset about this. But, you know, I'm trying to send people to your channel. So they have 75,000 subscribers. As you can see, uh, the Gullah Geechee people were people from the Carolinas and Georgia that... Uh, black people, slaves that escaped the, the plantation, rebelled or whatever, and went down to Florida and joined the Seminole Indians. Um, now, obviously not all of the black people left the plantations, not all of them could leave, but that spirit that caused them to leave, that spirit was still there, I believe, on the plantations. Um, ultimately, you had a lot of uh, African American or African enslaved uh, black people who fought in the Civil War. Um, if you ever seen the movie Glory with Denzel Washington, Morgan Freeman, um, uh, I think it Matthew Broderick. Um, there's one character in that movie who's from South Carolina. He speaks with like a um, a stutter. Uh, and Denzel is talking to him. Denzel's character is talking to him in a tent. And um, he's he's asking him. He, he said, Denzel says to him, he says, where are you from, boy? And he said, the, the guy says, I, I'm from South Carolina. And Denzel looks at him and he says, um, well, you should know better. And as I, you know, the way I took that is... Um, you know, people from the Carolinas, uh, you know, they were known as Geechees even back in during that time. And um, we had a certain uh, attitude about us that, you know, I don't I don't even see how we were slaves for so long as we were because, of the, you know, I, I know the attitude that we have today. We're good people. We'll do anything for you. But uh you know, there's a side to us that you know once you once you awaken that side, it's it's hard to deal with. So I see why we left the plantations and went down and formed our own communities and all that, and then fought a war, um, which ultimately led to 
emancipation. They say the Civil War is what brought about emancipation, but really it was so many black people who had rebelled and forming their own towns and militarization um, is what ultimately caused the U.S. government to say, look, if we don't find a way to keep these people from, you know, striking war against us, all it's going to get ugly. It's going to get really ugly. So, you know, we're going to have to let them free or fight them to the death because these people have in their mind that they're not going back to being slaves. So, uh, and I saw, I saw in the video that a lot of those people went to Oklahoma and I'm wondering if, uh, any of those people, Tulsa, Oklahoma, I think that's it. Oh, maybe it wasn't. But anyways, I, I wonder about, uh, Black Wall Street, if any of those people were actual Geechees that came from South Carolina and Georgia and Florida, uh, makes you wonder because a lot of the history a lot of our history we don't know about because our history right now would have it would have you believe that we were black people were slaves Indian people were all killed off in the story you know when in reality that was the farthest thing from the from the truth we were slaves but we were fighting you know Denmark uh DC uh, Charleston, South Carolina, one of the biggest slave revolts in the history of this country. Um, unfortunately, it never happened because somebody told on him, but uh, it's hundreds of stories about slave rebellions and things like that. But we don't hear about them because that would go against the narrative uh, that we were just docile people who were just went along with, you know, we we were to go, we were to go along, get along slaves, I guess, you know, we just went along with the plan, you know, any human being would know that going along with any plan of being a slave is, you know, it's insane, but being born into slavery, I guess that you wouldn't even know you were a slave, like the guy mentioned, I'm going to play a little bit more of this, and then uh, I'll, I'll go ahead and uh, call it there. In 1850, a group of black Seminoles and Seminole Indians escaped south across Texas to the desert badlands of northern Mexico. They established a free settlement and, as in Florida, began to attract runaway slaves from across the border. We are always taught that blacks enslaved in this country fled north for freedom. However, very rarely do we hear that they also fled south, as far as Mexico. In 1855, a heavily armed band of Texas Rangers rode into Mexico to destroy the Seminole settlement, but they got a rude awakening when they were stopped in their tracks by the Black Seminoles and forced back into the U.S. Many of the Geechees returned to Oklahoma and some of the Black Seminoles remained in Mexico, fighting constantly to protect their settlement from outside forces. The descendants of the Black Seminoles remain in Mexico to this day. In 1870, after the emancipation of the slaves in the United States, the U.S. Cavalry in Southern Texas invited some of the Black Seminoles to return and join the Army, and it officially established the Seminole Negro Indian Scouts. In 1875, three of the Scouts won the Congressional Medal of Honor. America's highest military decoration in a single engagement. The Black Seminoles had fled the rice plantations, built their own free settlements in Florida wilderness, 
and then fought almost continuously for over 100 years to preserve their freedom. If the truth be told, it is no surprise that these men made some of the finest soldiers that this country has ever produced. Today, there are still black Seminole communities scattered across North America and the West Indies. The black Indians live on the Andros Islands in the Bahamas. The Seminole freedmen, the largest group, live in rural Seminole County, Oklahoma, where they are still official members of the Seminole Indian Nation. The Mascago dwell in the desert town of Nascimiento in the state of Coahuila in northern Mexico. All have roots and ties to the Black Seminoles and the Gullah Geechee. So yeah, I'm gonna stop it right here. But uh, I just wanna say that, yeah, as far as Geechee goes, there's so many different meanings to the word Geechee, Gullah Geechee. Um, and, you know, that spirit, I just want to say that spirit, the whole, that fighting spirit, I think it started in the Carolinas and Georgia, moved down to Florida and, and just started spreading like a wildfire. And it became a problem for the U.S. government back in the 1800s. Um, as the gentleman said on the video, it lasted for 100 years. The Gullah Wars lasted for a hundred years, so that wasn't it. Was it was a problem that wasn't dying down, and it was getting worse. So, so ultimately, that sparked the uh, the Civil War. But if it wasn't for Black people and Native Americans rising up against this government um, to really fight back and show a force, um, you know, you never know how long slavery would have went. So that's all I got to say this morning. Um, you know, I just wanted to put something else, put something a little different out this morning. Um, but you guys can do your own research. All this stuff is online. It's YouTube, Google. Um, you know, this is just a small little portion of the Gullah Geechee people, um, the Seminole Indians. Uh, and I don't, I don't know everything. So, you know, if, if you see anything on this video that's, that you don't think is right, go ahead and comment on it. Um, so I could do a little more research, but, um, I like researching things like this because I, I don't like the fact that the narrative, the overall narrative, like I said before, is we were slaves, Native Americans were killed off or the pilgrims came over here and they started this wonderful country. Columbus, uh, discovered this wonderful land. Uh, you know, the, the history uh, is so skewed. It's, it's not even funny. So I suggest doing your own research, finding out information on your own. You'll be very surprised to, to know that, you know, your people were very uh, much stronger than what people say or what we think. Anyways, y'all have a wonderful Tuesday. Uh, good morning if I didn't say it already. Uh, if you like the content, like, subscribe, um, and uh, check out my books. Um, I'm a fictional writer. And I'll leave the, the website in the description. And um, I may come back on later. But for now, I'm going to get off and, and get some work done. Alrighty, you guys have a good one.